Hi everybody, welcome to my channel or welcome back. My name's Abby, otherwise known as Skinny Pigs One. Today we're doing a cage cleaning night. So I've got to clean out three large guinea pig cages. I do use fleece. So if you want to see us go from messy to clean, keep on watching. So one of the first things I do is start grabbing out some beds so that I can get a load of laundry going while I'm tidying up. So when you use fleece, you do obviously have to do a lot of wash. Well, I guess it depends how many pigs you have, but we got a lot of laundry to do. So while I'm down here, I usually like to have at least two or three loads have gone through while I'm tidying and looking after everybody. So it's just easiest to collect up the beds real quick because they don't require much shaking out. When you have fleece, you need to make sure that you're shaking out poops and hay because you don't want that going into the washing machine. Isn't that right, Rudy? So I'm just going to grab a couple more and then we will be right back. Okay, and we're back. So I've got my first load of laundry on. So pro tip for washing fleece, use hot water. It definitely makes your fleece shrink faster. So another pro tip is get your liners extra big. So at least three to four inches longer and three to four inches wider than the dimensions of your cage. So that when you do lose a little few inches, it still fits your cage. So it'll only shrink a certain amount and then it stops shrinking. So I always get my liners four inches longer, four inches wider, and they're perfect. So I like washing on hot water to really clean it properly. And another tip is put some vinegar in the wash load if you want to. That can sometimes help with the, any scents that are lingering. So every once in a while when vinegar jugs are on sale, I'll buy a whole bunch. And then for the next little bit, use it for every wash load. I usually throw in like a cup or more just to help strip the liners clean a little bit better and I of course also dry on high heat again when you are washing fleece on hot water and drying on high heat you do get shrinkage pretty quick but again it only shrinks so much and then it's the size it's gonna stay so I find drying on high heat just saves a lot of time because otherwise when, oops, somebody's in there. Sorry, Ray Ray. Otherwise when you're drying on low heat, it can take forever for thick cage liners to dry out. The washing detergent that I use is Tide Pods, the free and clear, I think they're called. So they're the unscented, just no dyes in them or anything. You don't want scents when you're washing your fleece. Guinea pigs are low to the ground, so any smells are going to be right in their face at all times, and they're highly sensitive to smells. So you could possibly do lung scarring, make them have a respiratory issue. So it's always important to not use anything scented. Another little tip is never ever wash with fabric softener or don't put a dryer sheet in the dryer that just leaves like a coating on the outside of the fleece and then it's not going to wick away the pee like it's supposed to so how fleece works is the fleece itself does not absorb urine it passes right through it that's why you have the absorbent layer underneath or sewn in between your liners so mine most of mine are u-haul so they pee on top and it sucks right through and then goes into the U-Haul and the top stays dry. When you first get liners, you might have to wash them three to five times before they're going to let water pass through. Often brand new fleece has a bit of a coating on it that you need to wash away. And that's definitely another reason I like to wash in hot water to get rid of that. So in order to not feel like I'm wasting water, I'll throw one new liner in with a wash load of stuff that needs to be washed. And then I'll keep that liner in for a couple more dirty wash loads. So then after about three or four wash loads, I'll take that liner out and then I can add 
like another new piece of laundry that I want to kind of get wicking. So I do that same thing for pads for beds, like say for a couch, I'll just wash it once. But for the pads of the couch, I'll wash them the three to four times with the other dirty stuff. So again, like I'm not wasting water. Hey mama, how are you? Another tip is if you're having a hard time getting hay or poops off your liners, you could always vacuum them off first and then go shake them out. Or you could shake them out and then run a vacuum over them. Some hay does really stick. So my personal way is just as you see here, I just sweep down them and a lot of it comes off. But there is stuff that's definitely a little bit trickier that I have to literally pull off. But if you're that concerned, honestly, I bet a vacuum would work really well. So another tip for sweeping up. You might notice that I don't use a broom and dustpan. I actually use a plastic cat litter scooper and dustpan. I found the broom would just stick to the liner, kind of like Velcro. So instead of sweeping the poops, it would just catch the liner and bunch the liner up and I wasn't doing anything. Or hay, I find, gets really stuck in the brush. So I use the plastic cat litter scooper to sweep the poops up into the dustpan. When I first started out using fleece, I used fleece throws from Walmart and then underneath used washable incontinent pads. So those are pads that you would put on a, a bed so that, you know, if somebody had an accident at night, you could just wash it and it didn't ruin the mattress. That's what I used. But then quickly I got sick of every time cleaning the cage, trying to set that up perfectly. So then I ordered my first set of cage liners and was hooked ever since because nothing beats just throwing down a cage liner and you're done. I had one cage at the beginning and it took me like half an hour just to set up the pads and then set up the fleece and all of that and it was so irritating and then when I got my first cage liners Literally, it was like five minutes later and I was done. And I was like, wow, this is great. I am never going back to fussing with the position of all the different layers. So links for all the shops that I have purchased from recently are down in the description box. There's links that can take you to my videos that are specifically on fleece and how to use it, how to wash it. I think fleece is a great alternative to disposable bedding. If you have a lot of cages, really large cages, if you don't want to have to keep buying bedding because it can get expensive. Cage liners are expensive up front, but I've had some of the same cage liners for over five years and they still work perfect. I have sold a bunch of used ones here and there throughout the years but I still have some originals from at least five years ago that have held up beautifully. And a lot of people ask me, um, when you're going to be getting cage liners, how many do I recommend you start with? So if you have one cage, let's say you have a two by five, I personally would recommend at least three or four liners so that you don't have this rush of washing and drying the same ones over and over because if you only had two cage liners you'd have to literally have your pigs wait somewhere while you wash and dry one so i think three or four so that you have a really good cycle going i just have to wash my hands and we'll be back okay so another tip that i have is buy smaller cage liners to go with your large cage liners meaning buy like one by twos to put places where they pee the most so that you don't have to change the entire cage liner you can just keep changing smaller pads same with beds 
it's really handy to have the pads for the beds so that you're not always changing out a full bed you can just change out a little pad so I find where they are, pee and poop the most is where they're eating and drinking so I always put their hay on top of a one by two liner so that every day if I need to I can change that one by two and then on their beds I have little pads so same thing, if it gets a little bit wet, the bed's still fine. I just have to change the small pad rather than having to find a whole new bed for them. Some people like to use where they're gonna eat their hay disposable bedding in like a litter pan and then have fleece for the rest of the cage. That is a great idea too, if that works for you. Cause then that's kind of the same thing. You're saving the fleece from getting too soiled and you can just change like a little litter box out pigs are notorious though for peeing and pooping where they sleep as well so some pigs can get used to being a bit tidier with going in a litter box where they're eating but a lot of pigs are still going to poop and pee in their bed or poop and pee randomly around the cage i tried back in the day when i first had pigs litter training them i had litter boxes for everybody but i actually got fed up with it because i'd still find pee and poop everywhere else and it was kind of like okay why am i wasting money on disposable bedding for a litter box when that's not the only place they're going so i just gave it up i know some people say that their pigs are extremely tidy which is awesome if you have that all the power to you i wish i did cage here's a three by 13 and a half so I've got a little section down here that I just have to fold one liner in half so here's their two by three that I used to put their hay on top so that every couple days I'll just change this because it will get quite wet with them being on top of here all the time eating their hay and pooping and peeing So these guys are on an adorable bumblebee print, one of my favorites. When I first started YouTube, there was a lot of debate from people about thinking fleece was crazy to use because it's not natural. But when you see guinea pigs snoozing on a couch as comfortable as can be you cannot tell me that it's a bad thing also something i used to hear all the time again back when i first had guinea pigs was they're gonna get bumblefoot from it and they're going to have utis all the time people just really were against fleece now definitely you could have pigs get urine scald bumblefoot UTIs if you're using fleece improperly, if you're not keeping it clean, if you're letting them be messy, but that's the same for every single bedding. If you're not keeping your cage tidy, they can have lots of health issues. It's not just designated to because you're using a certain bedding, that's because you're not keeping it clean enough. That being said, guinea pigs even in super clean cages still can get a UTI once in a while or guinea pigs with other health issues that you can't control can result in them having bumblefoot. But it was just uh, amazing when people were just trying to shame fleece that hey if you're using that your guinea pigs going to have so many problems with bumblefoot and all that stuff so I still hear that every once in a while that somebody will say well I was told not to use it because of this but you got to do what's comfortable for you so it doesn't matter what anybody else says or what their experience is if you're not comfortable using it then go with what you're comfortable with Hello. Try, try. 
So for the skinny pigs, one of the other things I love about fleece is having beds for them, like say this cuff tunnel or that snuggle sack, is absolutely amazing knowing how snuggly and warm they are. They have a harder time keeping their body temperature at a constant level. And what's comfortable for the pigs with fur could be too chilly for them. So especially when you're sleeping and not moving around, you have the potential to be a bit colder. So I just think there nothing beats knowing that they're going to be so cozy warm inside of a snuggle sack. I think it's so important to know that they're comfortable. So that's another reason, like I absolutely just love fleece, knowing that my skinny pigs have something soft against their skin and something super warm and snuggly. Every single skinny pig I have chooses the snuggle sacks versus sleeping on a couch or just laying on top of the fleece anywhere where that's what you'll see with the furry pigs. They'll be on a couch stretched out or top of a hay pile or just randomly sleeping somewhere. Every single skinny pig chooses to be inside of the fleece tunnels. Why? Because that is where they are super warm and snuggly. So that's another reason that I absolutely love that I have fleece versus having bedding because I that would be something I would really worry about for my skinny pigs is if they're warm enough. I know people can have other things. I'm just talking for myself personally. That's one of the biggest reasons I started really loving fleece. I, when I first started having pigs, all I had was six male skinny pigs. And it was just right away, just seeing them warm, snuggly and cozy. I was like, yep. This is the bedding for us, and I've stuck with it ever since. You definitely find um, the furry pigs in all of the beds too, of course, because they love it too. It's just really neat that the skinny pigs all choose to always be in those beds. It's extremely rare to see one of them sleeping out in the open versus in a snuggly bed, which who could blame them? So I might have mentioned in other videos, I like to have a lot of tunnels kind of out here, especially for this cage, because this cage is really big and open. So I don't want the pigs to ever feel like they're too exposed at any time. I want them to feel very safe and secure. So all along the cage as they go down, they have a chance to run through a tunnel and kind of hide if they feel the need to. Everybody being in the herd really seems to be a lot calmer. There's definitely safety and security in the numbers, but it's really nice to have places to go and hide as they move down the cage, just to feel safe. Okay, so last thing I need to go do is grab a huge pile of hay. So another huge question I get asked a lot is what hay are we using? We have Oxbow Timothy and Oxbow Orchard grass hay. I like to mix it up between the both. Because all the guinea pigs... Yes, I'll get to you, Huck. All the guinea pigs really kind of like a variety. We buy the huge 50 pound boxes. Any place that sells Oxbow, they should be able to special order you in the larger sizes. There should be no reason that they cannot. Larger sizes are a way better price for your dollar. So let's move on to the next cage. This is it for the herd. Bullseye and Angus. These guys are gonna be on some woodland fleece. Oops. So I have a joint support tablet here for Bullseye. We're just going to be letting it dissolve there in the water and then I syringe it to him later. We just gotta save some of this hay. So Bullseye does have arthritis. He is a senior. So that's one of the things we're doing for him. And he also requires some pain medication in order to be comfortable. 
and vet bed. So a vet bed, it would probably just be easy to Google and see where it is near you. It's something that doesn't absorb urine, is really cushiony, so that I add that on top of cage liners and it really gives some comfort to bullseye's arthritis. I put it where he will be sleeping and I think it works out really nicely. The only downside to that bed is if you have it anywhere where hay is, it sticks like Velcro, so that's why I try to keep it just over to where they're sleeping, because I would love to just have a whole cage of it, like put it all on top of my cage liners, but it would just be a nightmare trying to get all that hay off. I guess I could try to vacuum it, but anyway, the best part is where he's sleeping to have it. So when you're using fleece, you definitely need to clean your cage probably a minimum once a week fully. I do twice a week because I just find after three or four days that these main liners are pretty dirty. Well, not disgustingly dirty or obviously I would be cleaning it more, but they're just enough that I'm like, yeah, we need to change it. And you also are required to spot clean a minimum of twice a day since the poops don't get mixed in like it would with a disposable bedding. They just sit on top so you definitely need to sweep those up. So fleece in some sense is a quite a bit of maintenance. But in the long run for someone like myself who has really large cages and quite a few cages. Well, I guess it's not so many now since I opened that one whole cage. It's just definitely more cost effective, I find, to use fleece versus buying big bags of bedding and cleaning that out every couple weeks. But again, depending where you live in the world, maybe you don't have fleece or perhaps you can find really huge bags of disposable bedding for a really good price. That's just something I have never found. With the skinny pigs, I personally would want to use something like Carefresh to be nice and soft. And that stuff's like gold for a price around here. I think it's nuts what they charge for that. Get your vet bed down so you're nice and squishy. There we go, sweeties. I just got to grab them a bit more hay and it'll be a bit yet before I can give him his tablet. There you go buddy boys. So our next cage will be Apple and Huckle. I just got to go get their fleece. Huckster, are you next? Hey buddy. <laughs> get you all scruffed up. Oh, you're so sweet. Fuggy just loves this. You're so cute. I love you. You're such a handsome man. Are we going to clean your cage or just stand here? I don't mind. <laughs> okay. Are you ready, kids? 
Are you get tidy? Are you? Oh, you're such a sweet boy. Okay, off we go. Little Hucky Rumble, and he is a very, very rumbly pig, and he's always scent mark and dragging his bum everywhere. Excuse me, little man. I just need to get this. Yeah, pardon me. Not sure why you guys are going over where it's so dirty. Huckle and Apple are my two pigs that, if they could find a way, they'll burrow under some fleece. Never under the fleece that's on top of the core plus, but under the little one by twos or two by twos I put where their hay is. So I usually try to put their fiddle sticks, wood log things on top, and then a tunnel on top to try to discourage that. Anybody else have uh, pigs that dig under fleece? I'm glad mine don't go under here because that would be annoying if they're pooping and peeing on the chloroplast. You gotta go back that way, sweetheart. You can get those cage liners that got, go up and over the side walls so that they can't get under. I think it was piggy bedspreads that made the first ones that I ever knew about. Okay, can you guys go to the clean side, please? It's not your first day here. Come on. There you go. Good kids. Okay, Apple, it's that time. You're a good girl. Good girl. You're such a little angel. Good girl. So, if you're new here, Apple is prone to getting yeast infections. And she often will have a little bit of pee stains on her bum. So I wipe it clean on cage cleaning nights with a tiny bit of coconut oil. And then a warm wet cotton round after and then every night when it's not cage cleaning night I just use the cotton round that's wet and so far knock on wood she has been looking extra tidy so we just do what we can to keep her that way hi bun it's nurse bun bun hello and we're all finished though. You're late for your shift. Do you want to sweep up the floor for me? Do you? What's Bun Bun doing? Bun Bun's been feeling better lately. 
I had made a video that was talking about how he seemed really antisocial. That lasted for a couple weeks, but he's come back around again, which is really nice. Isn't it, Bun Bun? Love you. Okay, sweetheart. There we go. Good girl. You're truly a little baby angel. Hi, Bun. Apple has a very, very sweet personality. Well, just like all my pigs, but she's very tolerable to lots of things. Even though she doesn't like her bum getting wiped, she deals with it. This is one of my favorite fleece prints too. This was called, I think it was called Thankful Animals, I believe. It's from years ago, so that's another set of cage liners here that has lasted quite a long time. And they still look awesome. I love this print so much. This print, that B print, and I have a C print that are all my favorites. So you'll notice on all the cages that I have these little fleece drapes. I just like to give them their little security and privacy areas. And then it doesn't take up any room by adding more houses in here. How's that baby girl? So I'll put this smack dab here to try to prevent them from thinking they should go under. You never know if it's going to work. Some weeks they leave it alone, other weeks I find them stuck under there. You can't win. Let's see, maybe I should move it like this a bit better. So I'll put some hay down there for them. <laughs> and we are finished. So next on the list is to sweep up the floor because it's Hay gets everywhere, especially when you're shaking the stuff out. So I asked Bun Bun if he wanted to sweep up, but now we can't find him. Convenient. So I'm going to have to do another deep clean down here this weekend. I have to do one about every month. Because hay just travels and Bun Bun's fur. There's Bun Bun. Are you coming to sweep? Are you going to help? Good boy, Bun. Do you want me to get you a broom? I don't know if we have a broom your size. Well, that's nice of you to offer. And I definitely need to clean his Kong pad. So I always put hay down there for him sometimes and then it gets dusty. And then lots of bunny fur on your Kong pad, eh? And then we get poops that fall back down behind the cages, so I've got to move all the bins out to vacuum that. And it's unbelievable how much bunny fur I'll just find everywhere. Hey, Bun Bun. You're so cute. You're just the cutest little man I've ever seen. Thanks for your help, buddy. That was so nice of you. Such a good one.